So let us just touch upon some things in Diophantine equations. Let's see what more insights you guys have now uh, investigated or you've tried some things or read some things from that book or thought. Let's see. Diophantine equations. Okay. Obviously, uh, to begin with, we are doing the simplest case, which is the linear uh, Diophantine. Uh, linear Diophantine. Yeah. Uh, so, anyone would like to set the stage? What exactly were we doing? Anyone? Aparna, you can start if you want to. Let's just set the setting. What was the setting? Um, uh, no problem. Ah, uh, okay. So uh, this. So the equation was this right somewhat like this yeah and let's say that a and b are co prime yeah ishana is this correct or was it more specific <laughs> okay no problem yeah so no problem so this is the this is the equation and i don't remember how we came to this equation but we came to this okay but so, I mean, when you look at this equation and the GCD is one, what are the things we are interested in? Uh, and what are the things that we know? Yeah, what do we know about this? What do we know? So, so yeah, anyone? Maybe number one point, what do you know? Uh, so we know that there exists integer solutions x comma y, right? This is a very important fact. There exist integer solutions. I'm just writing integer solutions. Yeah, it's comma y. Yeah. So, Pragdish, do you agree to this that there exist integer solutions? Yes. So A and B have to be co-prime and then there exists. But this we have seen in during pigeonhole principle, just to recap. Also, we, but anyways, it's fine. You don't have to prove it on spot, but just that you know. And so you can try to guess, uh, you would know at least yeah, so on the level of calculating at least. But what is the most, uh, what is the other thing we're interested in? Algorithmically finding solutions. And that also we know, do we know? Anyone algorithmically finding some solution. And if some part of the screen gets blocked by something, just tell me, okay, uh, finding some solution. Do we know this? Yes, yeah, some method to find, yeah, solve. I will just say some solution. I'm not saying all solutions. Yes, so method to solve for some solution. Yeah. Do you guys agree? Okay, so let's actually try to execute. Let's just review because these things are all connected and this is all basically what elementary number theory is. So let's try that. Let's do this exercise. Yeah, let's get our hands. So let me choose some numbers so that you cannot just guess. Okay, guessing is always there, but uh, let's choose some numbers so that 240x plus 319. Yeah, so we should do calculations, more and more calculations. 319y. So this is just a straightforward. Even if you don't know anything, you can start trying this. Find x and y. But again, we would not like to just guess and so on. We have a method, so we would like to apply that. So what is the method that we should be using? So again, the question is to find no, like not a theoretical thing that prove that there exist and so on, but actually find. So let's think about this. And it's a crucial question. You would agree that this is a crucial question. We have used it in many places earlier. 
find a solution of this in in number theory itself not not in practical applications but number theory itself we have used this So anybody can, can give us a start. And we will be doing similar things for polynomials also in the polynomials class. And, and that will be very useful. And then all the you will see similarities. That, so anyone has a start as to how you can start finding the solution without just throwing guesses. Yes. So, I mean, that is what we had also discussed, right? That's the Euclidean algorithm. Is it, uh, do you recall now? I mean, either ways, it's the same thing that you're saying, right? Uh, that you just uh, basically just apply the Euclidean algorithm. This is what we had also done and what you have seen also, that's what it is. So let's just say we apply the Euclidean algorithm. Oh, you guys have forgotten. <laughs> I shouldn't forget. In the sense that you should keep thinking about these things, you know, whenever you get the time space, think about these things, just sit and try, you know, uh, just make it interesting in some, I mean, in the sense that you have to also make it interesting in, a, in some way. I don't know. That is will be different for each of you. Okay. Uh, create, take, create the space and time so that you can, you know, just have the time to relax and try these things. Okay. Yeah, so anyways, let's see. So this thing is this, so what's the remainder? 79, okay. And then we continue. So what will it be? Three, three seems good. In fact, the remainder is also three, I think. Yeah, and then you have, right? And then you divide it by three. Uh, sorry? 26 will be the quotient, right? Okay, yeah. And what's the remainder? One, right? And so then now from here, how do we go on? Now, how do we find the solutions from here?
So what should we do from here to, to find solution? So we just want a linear combination of 240 and 319, which gives us one. Uh, any any ideas and this is a very well known method right this is what you do uh, to find gcd you do it in a long division way but this is what actually is done right you take the divisor you take the dividend uh i don't know so you take the whatever what is that called the initial number and then you take the divisor yeah and then you get the remainder but then you take the divisor and the remainder and you do the same thing and that way we find the GCD, right? But now we don't want, we are not interested exactly in finding the GCD. Yeah, but we have, but then what should we do from here? Ah, you guys have forgotten, no problem. So it's good that you forget, then you have to think I mean, how do you extract 319 times something, 240 times something to get in one? You have three equations and 319 and 240 appear. No ideas? Okay, so let's see. No, no problem. Let's see. So we need to keep this one and we need to have this and have this. So reverse substitution, if I just say reverse substitution, does that ring a bell? Right? We would want to substitute 79 into this. Yeah, that, that is maybe what we should do, right? Or, or no, 79 the right, no. So first maybe we should get rid of this three here. Yeah, this three maybe is better to just remove the three. This three is the remainder, right? So we should first remove that. How do we do that? So we just take this equation, we multiply it by 26. Yeah. Or is there a, so I think last time, someone Nagesh, I think it was selling an easier way. And um, yeah, and that is forward substitution, right? So we remove the 79. How do we remove the 79? We substitute 79 into the second equation. So in the second equation, we write instead of 79, we write 319 minus 240 times one. I'm just keeping the times one, just to a record of what is going on, times three plus three. You see where this is going, right? Let's just write everything uh, in the way we want to. Linear combinations of 240 and 319 is what we're interested in, plus three. And we have 319 times three minus, this, right? And now what do we want to do? We want to, so I think we just, uh, um, so what can we do now? Because I usually do the back substitution, okay? So it is this three that we don't want, right? So we can substitute this, uh, but yeah, so that's the problem with this forward substitution that he was telling. So we put 79 into this, yeah.
um no but that is something that you've already used right if you use it again you will not you will get one equal to one or something like that i think is that uh, is that right maybe i don't know right if you write three as like that okay let's just think yeah no problem so yeah so that's why i always go with the back substitution i think that is better right uh, that's because in that way what happens is the three the what you remove just gets removed forever right so this three if you remove uh, so then you have this three and so then this becomes uh, this becomes uh, this no so it's 240 times uh, 26 right yeah and then this is three times 26 and this is three times 26 now you remove that three times 26 by uh, so this will be there 79 minus one right and so what is this this is 79 three times 26 is how much 78 78 plus 1 79 oh so this is i think coincidental yeah this is 79 minus 1 right and now you remove the 79 which 79 do we want to remove we want to remove the 79 right and it has a 79 so in this equation you multiply by 79 and you remove it use that to remove So you just 79 times 79 you remove using this and there you go. This is the yeah 240 times 90 79 plus 26. And this is what you want. So, I mean, is it is it good? I mean, do you guys understand the logic? Because once the logic is clear and you can tell yourself how you could have done this, right? Or what is the main? Um, last two steps. Yes. So what did I do? So I wanted to get rid of this three. And so I multiplied this equation by, because see the, what are the sequence of remainders, right? Sequence of remainders is one, three and 79. Yeah. I'm interested in the one. I'm not interested in the three and the 79. So first I remove the remainder three and to remove, now you see, this will always appear here also, right? So I remove this by, you know, just multiply it by 26. And then I substitute for three times 26, right? And then the, the after that step, what do we do? We remove the 79, right? So we have, uh, let's say, so we have this equation, right? Simplifying. And then we remove that 79 again by multiplying this equation by the weight of 79 that we have in this. It also turns out to be 79. So you just remove it and then you find it. I mean, let me give you one more. Well, let me give you guys one more to try now because it's. Uh, I, I thought you guys understood it earlier. No issues. So it's uh, good that we have to do this. So it's not like you shouldn't be like hanging on to it in the sense of trying to remember it, but it's just a logically what is the natural thing to be done. But let's just practice this a little bit, then it will be clear. And it should be more clear. So each of you has to be able to do this. So let's see. So we have 73 X plus 47 Y equal to one. Yeah. So yeah, I don't want just the final answer. You should tell me the steps and then we should do it. So first just work it out, work, work, work it out and then tell me. Uh, if you have completed or if you get stuck, then tell me.
चलो सो यू शुड नो इफ यू डन इट और इफ यू गेट स्टक देन ऑल्सो यू शुड टेल मी वेयर यू गेट स्टक then we can write till there and work it out till there yes so so let me know yeah, what is uh, the progress okay so one of you should tell me hey ishana so how much have you done ah okay ah okay let's see ah uh, aparna you have anything so far ha ah, okay good so try okay so i'll write the equations which you would have got mostly because there's only one way to get the equations stand up
Yeah, so you guys can match it. So Pragdish, have you done this much? This this thing, the executed Euclidean algorithm, and see if you get these. Ah, okay. Right. So this is the this is the usual thing that we do till here is which is you do it all the time to find the GCD. Okay, maybe not all the time. We just because usually we just factorize and but this is the right way to find the GCD. This is much faster to find the GCD than finding factors. For large numbers, it's uh, finding factors is just yeah it takes too much time. So let's see if anyone has makes progress from here, it will be interesting. So anyone has got the first step at least from here from, I mean, from here on, what's the next step? Yeah. I mean, so it's, it's clear what you would want to do in the next step, right? So you, we, what we want is we want an equation. Yeah. Which is a linear combination of what? So we would want to get rid of the five. Right, so you would be have a linear equation which is a linear combination of twenty six and twenty one. So don't try, don't take the whole step as one thing. Yeah, or there are several steps, but all of them are same in some sense. The rule is same. So you want an equation which is a linear combination of twenty six and twenty one, right? And one. Yeah. So you would want twenty six times something plus twenty one times something. Yeah, equals to one. This is the kind of thing you want. So it's not, it's not plus, this is times. Right? Uh, basically, you want to get rid of the five. So how do you eliminate the five from here? That should be the, there is a, so there is one way to do it. There is like only one way to do it kind of. Okay, so yeah, so the answer, I mean, that's okay, but what's the step? What is the step from here that you do? Twenty six times four. You did twenty six times four, right? Yes. And so you see, everybody sees that this is the only way to do because you want to remove that five. And so the way to remove that five is to multiply it is by this equation by four. See, there is no other way. I mean, keeping the 21 and 26 in the intact, right? You don't want to change their forms. 
I mean, this has to become a four, right? If you want to eliminate the five using the two equations, just like eliminating variables, right? You, when you solve just simultaneous linear equations, this is what you do. This is what you do. And so you just remove it. And so what do you get? You get 26 times four, 21 times four plus 21 minus one. It's, it's, not, a, so it's not a trick. It is not a trick. Right, it is the rule. I mean, it's a, it comes from this natural rule, right? So you want to remove that thing, and so it comes. Is this clear? Because the other steps are just the same. Now you have to just do the same thing again and again. There's nothing new. Okay. So let's see. Let me just, but let's just try to understand that it's the same thing. So. Now, now what it is, now it is uh, this you have, so let's just simplify it first. You have 21 times five minus one, okay? Now, what would you want to do? Yeah, now, well, basically, now you want to remove what? 21 is the next thing to go, right? You want to get rid of the 21. So what do you do? You multiply this, yeah, right? You multiply this equation by five, there is, that's the natural way to do 21 is like a variable. You don't want to make it 20 plus one. You don't want to make it five times four plus one now, right? You want to eliminate the 21 in a natural way as a variable, right? As you would eliminate a variable because you want to keep the 47, 26. So you multiply this by five. That's the natural way to do it. Right. And when you do that, Yeah, so it's like I'm substituting, I am substituting the value of 21 from this equation into this equation. Okay, not from this equation, but from this equation, sorry, from this equation, I'm substituting the value of 21 in the previous equation. And for that, I need 21 times five, right? So now I can substitute. So now if you substitute this, then what do you get? What does this become? So substitute, right? So this 26 times, so this is uh, what is happening. This is 47. I am substituting the value of 21 times five. So it becomes 26 times four plus one. And then you just continue again. But before that you simplify this, right? So when you simplify this, what does it become? 26 times nine plus one. Now you want to get rid of the 26. So you multiply it by nine and do the same thing. I mean, so what point is that every step is very easy and there are many steps. So that's why it's called an algorithm. It's something that you can just write and a computer can execute it because there is no thinking to do in some sense. You understand my point. I mean, obviously we have to get used to it. So we have to think. We, have to, we, will, we will have to think for some time. I mean, I get confused with this very often. Okay. So that's not a thing. But if you are clearly thinking, uh, then there's really nothing to think in some sense. It's a algorithmic thing. Obviously, to begin to get the idea is thought there, but each step is simple and there are many steps. And that's what an algorithm is. Something that you can you know, easily describe in terms of just very simple operations and then maybe a lot large numbers of them. And that's what computers are good at doing. And so you get some answer. That's okay. That's not the real point. Point is to be able to, you know, do this. So then I hope that we are able. Now you see, now you what you, now see, if I give you 10 more problems, it's okay. But you should just go back and just try, right? Just try, take some examples, or ask some friend, ask someone, or just make your own example, then just try it. Execute the thing. Or uh, see if you notice if you get some interesting question from here, how many steps is it taking? You know, I mean, I cannot make you like you have to, you have to see whatever makes you curious about it, right? You try to so create the space and try. That's the thing. First of all, there has to be some space, some time and space has to be there empty. Then because this cannot be forced into no, now you have to try this because uh, you have to, yeah. So think, so uh, let's see, yeah. So next time maybe uh, you can, yeah, try some and tell, tell me.
Or if you if you guys know coding, then you can try to write a program. Yeah, and then you can just present it next time. Yeah, it will just take some five minutes, right? You write a program and you then present it. Uh, see, this is what it is. When you enter these numbers, it gives you solutions. Yeah, it's an easy easy thing, right? So this is. So, coming back to the thing. So it's okay. We spend some time on this. It's an important prop, very very important thing to do. And so we know how to algorithmically find solutions. So maybe this is what we will do today. We will do more of this kind of thing. But then just to at least get to what we did last time, what I did. So you guys have, so it's good that we reviewed this. What's the next thing that we did, I think somewhat is to find all solutions, right? Describe. all solutions from a, from a single yeah so you remember we did some sort of a line and some sort of a geometry and naturally we found okay let's say okay this, this is a point then the other solutions come naturally Right, we had in a natural way, we got a description of infinitely many solutions, which looked to us that they are all and what was the form. So let's not go back into the explanation of the geometric thing, but you should try to draw and try to convince yourself, but we, we will do it in a more different and rigorous way. So what are all the solutions? And so it goes like this, if X not, so maybe it is just this point only. So there's not a new point. So to expand on this. So now I'm removing this, but um, because there are many interesting variants of these questions when there are three variables and what's the method, what if someone asks you to find positive solutions, you know, what's the number of steps that it takes roughly what it depends on, but you have to try more to get some questions on your own, which are meaningful to you. Okay. So let's see what's the next thing. As you said, describing our solution. So this is the description that we got to that if X not comma Y not is a solution. I mean, which is something that you find from the previous step, right? Which is something that you find from the previous step. So this is some solution. Then these are also solutions. The following are also solutions. We do is plus minus doesn't really matter, uh, but one of them has to be plus the other has to be minus. You can imagine how because it has to cancel out and so on. And even just a manipulation guess will tell you that this is a good thing. Then yeah, this where T is an integer yeah, are solutions as well. Right, so you use one solution to find other solutions. And why are these solutions? Well, it's not a surprise, right? You can just put and check. So you take X naught and you put this, what is T, T is any integer. You can put any integer, it will work out. You put zero, you get the solution that you had, right? So you had this B and then you have this, this. And now you see, if you simplify this, you get A X naught, as b by not just a minute it's very bright no it's not bright why is it looking so bright to me sorry tab minus tab and you see it cancels out it has to that's the way it's made right but we got it geometrically you know it depends if some person may well, i used to remember this algebraically i never tried to get a geometric view and nobody told me and i never tried also but over time you know i came naturally and then so on i mean it's easy very easy thing not nothing yeah but but the point is that this cancels but algebraically it's very easy to remember it this is one because it's a solution so not coincidentally these are solutions this do you guys understand right this t could be any integer right x not plus x not plus b comma y not minus a is also a solution x not plus 2b 
comma y naught minus two a. Yeah. So you find one solution, and so is this is this, you understand what this is? Is it because there is a lot of notations, but you to understand what is going on, right? You can imagine some numbers and some solutions, and it's just that. Okay, but then the key thing is that, which is a part of this only, is that these are all solutions. And also, geometry was telling us that we were not really missing any solutions. But this we have to prove. We are geometrically fine. That's an explanation. One can go back and again convince themselves, and maybe convince in the exam by writing it clearly. But that's okay. But we want to prove this that these are all the solutions. We shall do it through an example again first, uh, and then we will uh, and we will simultaneously do it parallelly. This will be the first time you will be doing such thing. Yeah, I think. Yeah. Proving that what you have found is your solution. So this is a very interesting thing, right? That the natural things you get really work out. Something good, something good. That is something good, right? You find one solution by this algorithm. You draw that line. You find the other solutions, and then naturally you get that T A B T A thing. And uh, these are all solutions. What is what you expect? And these are all solutions. And you could start with any x not comma y not. You could start with any solution. You could guess a solution, and that's also fine. If if you're given one solution, you can find all solutions like this. That's the nature of this line, right? It's same everywhere, and so that's why uh, guess from any solution you can generate all solutions. Is what you would also expect. No solution is more special than the other. I mean, okay. Um, number theoretically, but maybe combinatorially there is positive solutions, negative solutions. Those are more combinatorial questions, right? Because because the natural numbers are not really number theoretic. Okay, that's where we do number theory, but then they don't have a subtraction, right? So they don't have this good symmetry and what what the mathematical thing they don't have. So it becomes more of a puzzle to begin with. And obviously, then there is some theory, but it becomes difficult to make a theory out of something where you cannot subtract. Right, so that's why natural numbers or positive solution, same thing, is a little more combinatorial. But a lot of work has been done there, uh, and that's also part of it. Is also an interesting topic. But uh, let's see. But first, to say that these are all solutions is what we should focus on. You see how rich this topic is, right? It has its connections from geometric view, and then there is this. Obviously, practical thing, and then Chinese remainder theorem, and then it's just there, right? It is just the thing. So it's you can approach it from any angle, and you can stumble upon this. This is a very interesting topic. So let's try to go and show that these are all solutions. Okay? And again, the methods that we are using will be used in other standard questions like finding all Pythagorean triplets, right, and so on, and those kind of things. And many types, like I showed you that book, they have a chapter on parametric. This is a parametrization with time. Right? T is the parametrization. Simply describing the solutions using a very simple parameter. A simple thing which it depends on is what I'm trying to say. So let's just take an equation. And this time we won't solve it, we just guess a solution. So hopefully we can guess here. Um, so what should we take? Something that we can guess easily. You can just take a small one, okay? 3x plus 7y equal to 1. This is too easy. So maybe 3 is too small. So 7x plus 12y. So now I guess this uh, should be fun, easy. X can be yeah, nice. That's a good one. Um, but let me just take positive solutions. It doesn't nothing wrong with mine. Nothing nothing uh, but the minus five. But just positive solutions I'm taking. Oh, also sorry. How can there be positive? Yeah. So what I just wanted to is it take this. Sorry, there cannot be a positive solution. Yeah. What you said is also correct. This is yeah another solution. 
so by what we have said here we get this other solutions will be what so t b is 12 so i mean tb but let me just write 12 t that's a more traditional way to write it and minus four so one of them has to be minus other has to be plus it doesn't really matter you see it's integers so it's t is ranging over all integers it doesn't matter so what should it be what, what is it ah seven seven again yeah but well, never mind yeah this and so uh ishana the solution you are saying is what minus five and three can you find it here by putting some t yes you see so that solution comes from here and the claim is that any solution comes from this or even if you started with that you would have got this by saying that's the thing so this is a nice thing so everybody can see this right minus one see you get that solution and any other solution anyone guesses will come from putting some t but we want to prove this, that these are all solutions but notice that we have found already found infinitely many solutions you will change the t's you will get infinitely many solutions wonderful thing that's a wonderful thing i mean it, it gives us so much power right like one would just think that's so much difference right i mean just guessing a solution and then just little things we are able to find all solutions we're almost there finding all solutions so these are the theory there's a theoretical side and there is an algorithmic side also finding the one solution for big numbers it's extremely rich topic yes i mean so to find all solutions you have to find some solution right <laughs> see that is that, that's like that's like a necessary thing right i mean how can you find all solutions without finding one yeah but you're right no no so you're right so i'm yeah so in the sense you're saying that you have to do the hard work to find at least one solution and yeah that is what you have to do yes and see that is a necessity because there is this these equations that we are looking at are pretty general right in some sense these are not trivial things right because this keeps changing this 7 and 12 can change it could be 21 and 12 right it could be 13 and 15 so you cannot expect that so you're right you're saying that there is no formula for that first solution or for that not first for the for that one solution either you guess it or you find it by that long algorithmic process everybody understands this right it, so there is no formula like way in which x naught and y naught can be described in terms of that seven and the 12 right that one solution that you find that cannot be described directly in terms of a and b but it can be found by a large number of simple steps that's the trade-off is this point making sense yeah the first solution there is no formula because and the reason is that there is no because the first solution you have to find because there is no formula like way to say the solution but once you find one of them then the rest can be generated and that's the geometry of the line simple geometry that's why it can be okay so there's a lot of power in the algorithmic method because you see this said like recursively we are generate yeah, back substitution back substitution so there is no formula for that x not comma y not but it is at but at the same time it is easy to find i mean it's a repetitive thing right it's an easy repetitive thing and it takes this you know, simple operations so that's the trade off between in mathematics sometimes right you have to either you get a recursive thing which is a takes a large number of steps but simple ones or you have a we will see some places where you do not have to find even one of them by this there is formula for all of them directly and then uh, there are all kinds of things okay. okay so the claim is what we should just write okay. the claim is that uh, these are all 
maybe it was just here only these uh, these are all solutions so let's just execute it in this case first and the general case is same same reasoning will work so any ideas as to how we can show this so from that line reasoning it was clear right if you draw that 7s come tell why plot this point you know that you will have to go a minimum number of certain number of steps right to one second and just close the window there is some smoke All right. So how do we show that these are all solutions? Well, so you know, just uh, see these are these kind of things cannot be done directly, right? You have to go by contradiction, or you have to kind of you know assume that there is a solution and show it is of this kind. So assume that. So let. Uh, so this is this case. So this is seven x one plus twelve y one equal to one be some solution. I mean, I should just write. Let x one comma y one be, you know, some other solution. Right. Let x not let, let x one comma y one be some other solution. I want to show that. What do I want to show? I want to show that this x one is equal to seven plus twelve t for some t, and this y one is equal to minus four minus seven for the same t. I don't know what that t is because I don't know what x one is, but I have to show that there is some t. That's what I have to show, right? So well. You know, I mean, how do you do this? Just you have to use the fact that what you initially have is a solution, right? Seven and minus four. So, well, just write it again. You have to use this fact, and you have to homogenize. You subtract, kind of just subtract, just subtract, and you get this. Just two, just those two equations. When you see the natural thing is to subtract them. Right? That's how I am seeing it. But yeah, this is a. And you just subtract it. You this becomes plus eight, and this becomes zero. So far, so good. I mean, use the fact that seven and minus four, because see, seven and minus four are two numbers which we understand as seven and minus four. But this problem understands seven and minus four as a solution to this equation. So unless you use that, you're not going to get anything. Think like what. I mean, you have to understand what that problem for that what seven and four is, what seven and minus four is for that, not what it is in general. I mean, there that's what it means, and so you have to use that. That's the, so the person who understands what what the problem is trying to ask or know, he can solve the problem faster. That's the thing. So you have to get into tune with what is the meaning of this thing in that context in general. That is the difference between you know. So. Then this is the thing, and well, now you see you have to just compare certain things, right? If when you look at this kind of thing, when minus doesn't matter, some sort of divisibility questions arise. Like seven doesn't divide twelve, right? So seven has to divide y one plus four, right? This means that this y one plus four is divisible by seven, right? So it is seven times some d one. Well, and similarly. I mean that is the condition, right? That seven and twelve are co-prime. Right? I mean this twelve has to this. When you see this kind of thing, that's what it is, right? It's seven divides this one and twelve divides that one. That's what numbers are all about, right? Uh, so then twelve and so twelve has to divide that, and so this thing 
is divisible by 12. And so it is 12 times some D2. But then you put everything in the equation, you get that the D1 and D2 have to be the same. Right, because I mean, they have to also satisfy that equation again, right? The value on, on the, from the perspective of the values, the measure, the quantity, right? not just divisibility and factors. The value that they satisfy have to be equal. And so you will just work it out that D1 equals D2. When you just put this, I mean, Y1 plus four here, so this is minus 12, seven D1. And when you put this 12 D2 equal this, I'm saying the quantity just as pure quantities, not even as natural numbers, right? This cancels and, ah, sorry. So D1 not equal to D2, D1 equal to minus D2. So that's wrong, minus D2, okay? And so then what do you get? Yeah, so let's just uh, change the D2. So this becomes minus D1. So X1, so what do we finally get? Yeah, what we finally get is, pay attention. The so Y1 is minus four plus seven D1. And the X1 is seven minus 12 D1, which is what you wanted, some T. We don't know because you don't know what X1 and Y1 are, right? This is a, it's a, it's a non-constructive thing, right? We are imagining if there is any solution X1 comma Y1, then it will look like this, but you don't know exactly what that X1 and Y1 is. As numbers, you don't know them. Yeah. We are reasoning over all numbers. That's the, that's proof. We are proving something, right? So we, are, so we want to show that these are, this is an exhaustive list. We want to show that these are all solutions. So if there is some other, that's the natural thing, right? If there is some other solution, then this will happen. Then I'll subtract the equations. So then I mean, you could end up with the other way. Then this, 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 and, but it finally looks like in this category, in this form, in this family of solutions, you see Y1 is minus four plus seven D1 which is what it is, right? I mean, this minus plus is fine. That is just minus D1 becomes T1 and T and so on, right? But it's the same thing. So what we just proved is that these are all the solutions. So is, is any, so just see, I mean, I, I just, just see for now, if you understand the steps, yeah. these are the kind of arguments that keep coming up as you do more number theory, Olympiad type number theory and so on. You don't have to try to remember this solution or anything, but just Yes, exactly. What X1 and Y1 it will depend on that, right? I mean, D1 is Y1 plus four by seven. And it is also X1 plus minus seven by 12, but oh, that doesn't give any insight. That's why I'm not saying it, right? Okay. Okay, so this is some theoretical stuff that we had to do, it's fine find all solutions. But more importantly, you know that these are all solutions even before you do this proof by the geometric reasoning, pretty convinced that these are all the solutions. Okay. And uh, algebraically also is a natural thing to do. You add that 12 T and subtract that 70 so that it cancels out so that you not know, 12, 7, 12 times 7 times T cancels out and it remains a solution. So those are the things which are hey, more useful. Maybe. These are also, anyways. So then, then I would like to stop here today, but just give you a few problems in the context of what we have done so that you guys can uh, think, they have time to think. Okay?
uh, I will maybe give a little bit of this. Yeah, let's just clear everything and give me some, give some, so I'll not make any comments. I'll just give the problems and then you can think first, okay? Uh, so this is just something you should, should try. Again, as I say, always try easier versions of the questions if you cannot do the actual ones. There is always an easier version to any question. So should, that's the attitude you have to take. Yeah. Um, so the first question is, find, yeah, let's, uh, some practice is important, right? I mean, you guys should do it on your own, but never, that's not the point is, I mean, I should just give, find, so find all solutions or describe, find all solutions to, but, so I'm giving small numbers, uh, but the point is you should do it. Yeah. Okay. Now, Find all solutions to no, no, no integer solutions, right? So we are always looking at integer solutions, not positive. There will be no positive solutions. This is one. How can you get one from thirteen and nineteen? So always diaphantine means integers unless said, then it becomes positive. Yeah. Find all solutions to this. So now there is a two. So you have to see. Find all uh, solutions to uh, so four x plus ten y equal to Again, this is a variance of what we've done, but you have to use your, and if you cannot find all, find some, find infinitely many, find as many as you can, whatever. Yeah, see what you can do. Yeah. But uh, yeah. Yeah, so find uh, all positive solutions. Yeah, so now maybe we can just do positive solutions. 4x plus 10y equal to 50. Okay. Find smallest K so that there is a positive solution to Again, K will be a multiple of two is clear, but what is it? Like if you put two, obviously you're not going to get. So obviously you need 14. That's certainly one bound, but is there a solution for 14 for S plus 10 by equal to 14? Uh, is there yeah, a positive solution? Oh, uh, well, what happened? <laughs> oh, there definitely is, right? Uh, so um, wait, we just one. So then uh, I, uh, mm, yeah, because you can just put X and Y equal to one, and then that's always a smaller solution. I mean, no, but, uh, uh No, so let me change the question. This is not interesting. Now leave this. So what happened? I don't know. But try these four questions to begin with. Yeah. Uh, find the smallest positive integer in the set four x plus ten y 
x and y are integers. So this is a set of integers, right? You have four, whatnot, you have a lot of integers there. But what is the smallest positive integer that is there in that set? Okay. So this is easy. Just try out. But is the question clear, right? Like this set is what? This set has a lot of things. It has 14, it has 10 minus 4, 6. It basically take 4 and 10 and then take all additions, subtractions, and so on, right? Very interesting set. So you get uh, a two is there, minus six, uh, whatever minus six is there. Well, what's the smallest positive? Seems like two is the answer here. It's easy, seems easy, but yeah, is it? Prove it, whatever. And but in general, I want to ask: find smallest, and this has to be described, positive integer in the set. A x plus A and B are fixed. Okay. So it will be some quantity that we have been looking at always. So you take this example and other examples and you would know, or just take some examples and tell me fix A and B. All right, so then that's it. Let me stop here. Try these questions. Note them down before leaving so that you can just have it with you. Try them. Take create space, try it. Uh, just note that I mean, some things take more time in the beginning, but you have to just be a little patient and just uh, sometimes, sometimes it's more easy. Sometimes you don't catch all the topics equally, but you have to just patiently. You have to know yeah, it's coming. Once you keep doing this, there will be, it becomes interesting uh, if it's not immediately. Yeah, not in a forced way, but just create the space for it. That's all.